Logan, uh, you've met everybody here now, and uh, the best of you are is the uh, Rosso Public Affairs Committee, and uh, we're pretty much charged with uh, monitoring both town and county outlets to see uh, how we can improve things on those agendas that impact us both inside and outside our gates. So we're very interested in uh, who you are and, and what your reasons are for running for office. And at this moment, I'm going to give the floor to Julie and uh, she'll run you through the rest of the meeting. And this will probably take no more than an hour, I would hope. Julie, you have the floor. Well, Logan, thanks again for giving us this time. I know it's very busy before the election. But as Jack said, what we'd really like is for you just to tell us about yourself and why you decided to run for the Beaufort County Council for District 7. Yeah, absolutely. So before I think we even get into um, why I decided to run, I think we have to talk about some of the things that led up to me even to making that decision or being put in that situation. Sure. Um, I moved down here when I was about seven years old to Hilton Head, South Carolina. Um, my dad owned a practice on Hilton Head. Um, I went to our elementary schools, high school, and then eventually college here. Um, the situations that were dealt to me at a young age really caused me to grow up quickly. Um, my mom passed away when I was young. And I was raised by my single father uh, with my siblings here. You know, after that, we went on. I graduated from Hilton Head Christian Academy. Um, I enrolled at University of South Carolina, Beaufort, where I went on to get my degree in elementary education. You know, I chose education because I wanted an outlet to be able to connect with people and give back to people that have influenced me. I wanted to use the experiences of my life to, to put a positive impact on others. Um, I figured the classroom was the best place for me to start doing that. Um, after about three years of teaching uh, here in Beaufort County, I decided to step outside the classroom and that's what led me to run for county council. Um, I just felt it was time to make a broader impact on the rest of the community instead of just those students inside of my classroom themselves. Um, you would have asked me 15 years ago if I'd be running for a position of leadership or a public office, I probably would have told you you were absolutely crazy. Um, growing up as a kid, I, I could tell you I was not the easiest child to get along with. You could ask my mom or my dad that. Um, you know, but it comes that point in your life when you realize people have invested in you, people have made an impact on you, and it's your time to do that as well. Um, and that's when we decided to go 100% into this. So I left the classroom. I started to run for county council. I went full time at my second job that I was at that one time. So I actually managed the restaurant and bar over at Station 300. Um, and that's led us to where we are today. Um, so we're really trying to push a couple issues. Big one is transparency in Beaufort County. Um, we all read the papers. We know the things that have been said. We know the things that have been done. And I wanna make sure that you know a person that's invested in this community from a young age to now, who's gonna to continue to be involved in this community can make sure that the county is being ran the way that it's supposed to and being transparent with the individuals here. Well, what we'd like to know is what are your thoughts concerning <clears throat> development along 278 corridor and 170? Yeah, so do you wanna talk about those together or do you wanna separate them? Together is fine. Sure. Uh, so let's go ahead and start with 278. I mean, I know there's been a lot of proposals. Uh, when you talk about 278, you have to start talking about, are we going to widen the lanes? And that also goes into the Hilton Head Bridge. Um, I like to focus on when we talk about the bridge. I've seen multiple plans um, that they've decided um, to present to the people, us, myself. But I think the biggest thing we're going to have to ask is one funding. I know that we got a lot of funding from the state already for this, but this is going to come on the back of the taxpayers eventually, just like the removal of the other bridge. If we decide to go that route, it's going to come on the back of the taxpayers as well. Um, I think we need to find out which way, which solution is going to one, be most environmentally friendly and two, protect the property values of the residents that that bridge is being built. Because from my understanding, it looks like it's going to come over around Spanish Wells. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of individuals that have invested their livelihood right there. And their investment could be their household, their business. And a lot of that can be impacted. Um, even restaurants themselves can be impacted when you start changing that route because they start changing the direction of flow. If it's going right past your front door. I mean, th there's a lot of things we're going to have to discuss with that bridge. Um, I've also seen the designs of 
I think it's Jeff Bradley came up with the design, maybe even turning the other one into a park. Mm. Um, I think it's a, it's a really cool plan. Um, again, it's going to come down to dollars. Um, it's something to look into because, you know, a lot of people are like, well, having two bridges is going to mess with the environment. You're right. It's going to, but tearing down another bridge and building another one is also going to mess with the environment. So, I mean, there's going to have to be a little bit of give and take to figure out which solution is the best solution for the entire community. Because ultimately, the more time that we waste on that bridge and waste getting to work, the less productive this county is. Um, the more damage done to our roads because the longer they're on the roads and just continues the trickle effect. Um, when you want to talk about 170, um, I assume we're going to talk about going to 46, 278, or are we talking about the expansion, expansion of the Bluffton Parkway? Which one did you want to touch on? Both. Okay, Both. so. My next sure. question actually was going to ask what are your thoughts on the realignment of the Bluffton Parkway? But also upper 278 corridor because there's a lot of development along there. And then from 278 toward Buford, that's 170, a lot of development there too. Yeah, so when you wanna talk about the rest of the 278 corridor, I know one of the big projects is Island West. Mm -hmm. um, about eight months ago, I reached out to their HOA before the primary even happened and started talking to Jim, who's the guy in charge of it, um, along with working with Weston Newton. Um, we got to figure that out. I've been working with them, encouraging them to come up with a plan to purchase that property. Don't even let it get to county council to let them try to rezone that property. Um, I've already been public about letting them know that I refuse to vote yes to allow yeah, the rezoning to happen. Sorry, you good? Um, I refuse to vote yes to allow the rezone of that property. Once again, those people have invested their money into that property to live on a golf course. And the moment you take that out and put that commercial, their property values will without a doubt take a hit. Um, I don't know if you guys follow the real estate market at all, but it's obviously super hot right now in Beaver County. But with that being said, there's a lot of houses on Island West for sale because people are trying to get out. Um, that's sure. gonna drive prices down. And you can't blame them. They're just trying to protect their initial investment. Um, but they need to be given that opportunity to purchase that golf course so they can protect their investment. Um, I've had a conversation about two weeks ago, and it looks like they are moving forward and have come up with a budget plan for each individual household to purchase that land to protect their golf course, which is what we want. You never even want it to get to the point of county council because anything can happen when people that don't live there start voting. Um, so we want to continue to push for smart development. Um, I want the growth of this community to happen. I want the economy to continue to grow. I want the residential stuff to be in Beaufort County so we get that tax revenue without raising our taxes. You know, a lot of people talk about busing in people to work, which I get, you know, but that's our tax dollars going towards transportation. And we're also losing those tax dollars of people living outside of our district. So we need to be smart about where we're building these residential communities. Um, I believe you also talked about the Bluffton Parkway realignment. Right. Um, yeah, this is a big one for me. I know it's a big one for you as well. We've discussed. Um, first thing people need to admit is the way it was drawn to begin with is not the way this road was built to begin with. I know that that road ends at Hampton Hall. Um, I don't know how exactly that happened. I wasn't in that room, um, but it happened. Now we're stuck, yourself and myself, picking up those pieces. Um, I would tell you 5B is what it's called on the list. I do not support it. I don't support spending over $50 million on a road when we already have roads that we've put money on that we can't either A, maintain, or B, finish developing. Um, they want us to foot the bill for somebody else's decision in the past, which I'm not okay with. I'm, uh, I'm, I know you guys are in Rose Hill. I'm sure other people see this video as well. I'm in Shell Hall. Um, it's gonna go right through my backyard. Again, it's gonna, <laughs> <laughs> it's going to. Um, it's gonna hurt my property values. It's gonna hurt your property values. It's gonna hurt the towns. It's gonna to hurt Old Carolina and parts of Pinecrest. It's no different than that golf course and which I've stood up for, like I said, nine months ago. We have to be able to protect our investments. We have decided where to live and where to make these decisions based on the information they gave us. If that information is changing, we have the right to stand up and fight to protect our investments. Now, on the other side of the Bluffton Parkway, um, I'm obviously you guys are well informed exit three. Um, you know, the state's already approved that state's starting to get funding for that, which I see, some people see as a burden, but I see as an opportunity. 
Um, one that keeps the pressure off 5B because it keeps the development away from us. Um, it lets us focus on Buckwalter, which we've already invested in and continue to develop that area. Now, I don't know if you guys have seen the plans at all. Um, 170 and Bluffton Park where they tee up at that stoplight and you can go left towards the circle or right towards 278. That's eventually where they want to straighten it out. Now, I would like to see where the funding from that is going to come from because again, taxpayer dollars for roads when we already have roads that aren't developed is an issue I have. But I would rather see the growth going out that direction because it lets us have opportunities for more residential and commercial to continue building that economy. Um, but we got to, there's going to have to be that meat in the middle um, to figure out how we can go about doing that because the JASP report's coming. Um, it's a great opportunity for us as Beaufort County residents to capitalize on that tax revenue. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know how many of you guys are from here or moved here. We haven't gotten to know each other that well, but one of the big issues um, I have personally and I've pushed in my campaign is we love welcoming people to come to the low country. Um, I love Beaufort County. I'm not going to tell somebody, oh, we've had enough people. Let's close the doors because we should have did that the person before then or the person after. And you get to that merry-go-round. But what I do want people to realize, and I always want to stress to individuals, is why did you move down here? If it truly was just the weather, then, you know, we were blessed with great location on the water and the weather. That's great. But if it was because of policies or taxes, property taxes, or ways of life that caused you to leave, then I encourage you to continue to take a step back and look at which policies and which candidates put those things in place to make this community that way. And that's one of the big drives I talk about when I say responsible growth. We want it to grow, but we want it to go the right way. We want to protect those low country values. We want to protect our low taxes. There's no reason our taxes should have gone up twice in the past three elections. I mean, we're at 7% sales tax. Parts of New York are as high as 7% sales tax. We have to figure that out. And that stuff adds up. Well, I was going to ask you what your overall vision was for development in, in Beaufort County, but I think you probably covered that. Is there anything else you want to add to that? Yeah, I mean, I think we could talk about, when you look at all over Beaufort County, workforce housing is something that we're going to have to figure out, um, especially if I'm sitting here saying I want to promote the economy and I want to promote more jobs. Um, I have trouble finding people to work at the industry that I run. Um, hospitality is a big thing here in Beaufort County, and let's be real, most of that is no fault of our own. We've just been blessed with a great location. Um, but we need to make sure that we can create those opportunities for those people to live here in Beaufort County. Um, I don't think that is a government job. I don't think it, it means the government needs to get their hands in there and start supplementing housing. I don't think it means we need to tell people what they can and can't do. But I do think it means we need to create opportunities. You know, when we talk about on a federal level bringing jobs back to the United States, it's not about forcing them to come back, but it's about making it more desirable here than somewhere else. How can we make Beaufort County a more desirable location for a medium household income neighborhood over Jasper County? Or if we're talking about Hampton or Ridgeland, wherever they might try to develop these places, let's try to get them here in Beaufort County. Um, that tax revenue is a big thing for us, especially on our school system. Well, the last thing I wanna ask you is, is there anything else that you want to, the people of Rose Hill to know about you and your goals? Anything that you haven't covered? Yeah, I mean, there's a couple things we can touch on. I'll touch on two or three of them. Uh, one of the projects that I'm really interested in looking into um, right around Rose Hill, Buckwalter, parts of 170, and uh, Bluffton Parkway. You know, we've talked a lot about our roads. We know the condition of our roads. We know the traffic on our roads. Um, one of the things I wanna look at is expanding our bike paths on one side to maybe doubling the size of it on width so we can create a golf cart community. I mean, they, they do it right now in um, Sun City and they also do it in Old Town Bluffton because of the speed limit. We don't have those speed limits here of 35 and below so golf carts can go on. We're all around 45. Um, some places are 35. but I think that's something if we can look into that and figure out a way to do that responsibly, I think that would one, cut down on our traffic and ultimately help in that community atmosphere that we want to. I mean, 
you guys have a golf course in your neighborhood. I'm sure you guys have hundreds of homes that have golf carts sitting in their garage right now. Um, I live in Shell Hall. We have about 350 homes. We have about 100 golf carts. And they just drive them around the neighborhood. But <laughs> a lot of them, <laughs> it's crazy. They just go hang out with each other and drive them around the neighborhood. But a lot of them would like to take them to the grocery store up at Kroger or Publix. Um, go over to the movie theater. Go to the restaurants. We have Washington Square getting ready to open right across from Woodbridge. Um, this is a big opportunity for us to create a lot of community living, um, which is positive for us. It's a great atmosphere. It's something that I think could really flourish here. Um, and you can fit three golf carts in one parking spot. So that cuts down on a lot of your parking issues you have in these areas as well. Um, Food Lion does it right now outside Sun, Sun City. Um, they have golf cart parking right there up front. I think it's something that I want to look into. Um, Another thing I want to talk about is I'm not admit, I'm not afraid to admit what party I, I run in. Um, I don't like to talk about the other candidate I run against. It's actually the first time I've ever done it. And you can look at any of my videos. She's afraid to. Um, she won't admit it because of higher taxes, higher cost. Um, I want to help our schools. Um, I want to make sure that we can continue to grow this community positively. But it has to be done the right way. And that has to be done with transparency responsible spending, not by raising our taxes, not by raising our impact fees. The moment you start raising your taxes and raising your impact fees, the only people you're gonna hurt the most are lower income families. It's without a doubt. The medium household and above, they don't really pay attention to that little increase on tax, or they don't pay attention to an impact fee that gets passed down to them from a builder. But those people on the lower income side, that makes a big difference. Um, I've been transparent on this campaign from the beginning. I'm going to be transparent when I win this election on November 3rd with your guys' support. And I, I see some like laughing at me with it. I, I say it confidently um, because I truthfully believe I'm the right decision for Beaufort County. Um, I believe I'm the person that can bridge the gap from county council and school board. Um, I've been inside the classroom. Um, I've been working in District 7 for the past nine years. I've worked at the same job. I've, I've grown up here. I've seen the changes in this community. I want to make sure that we can continue to move this community in the right direction. Well, thank you very much again for your time. I think this has been a whole lot of really useful information for us and for our residents. I really, really appreciate you coming. I know you're a busy guy. Now I'll turn it over back to Jack. Again, thank you again for having me. I appreciate it. Just wish for me a phone with Julie yesterday. We really appreciate your time today, Logan. Uh, I think you presented very well for yourself. And uh, I also wish to thank Julie for putting this all together for us. And uh, absolutely. hopefully we do a little bit more of this. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Julie, Mike. Julie, thank you again for setting this up and be willing to meet with us. Like I said, it, it's really hard to get together. Um, I can't thank you all enough for taking your time out of your day to have myself. And I'm sure you'll have Jody later this week. And I hope she's just as excited as I am. Um, we appreciate it. Thank you very much. And if you guys have any questions uh, about me, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'm on Facebook, Logan Cunningham for County Council. Or if you want to check out my website, it's logancunningham.org. Whatever it might be, any information you need, please reach out, research, um, so we can get this done in November. I, I thank you guys for your time. Great. Thanks again, Logan. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.